I want to make it clear that uh, what I was demonstrating here was just the effect on the stars and the image in general. These are not all of the processing steps, you know, DBE and perhaps other things uh, that you would, might want to do with the data along the way. So uh, I just did enough with uh, photometric color calibration to get a color picture here so that I can look at the stars and compare the old and, and new method. Let's continue then with uh, some of the other features that are now available in uh, WBPP. One of them uh, is that you can now have different instances of uh, cosmetic correction. So you can, you, you already know how to make these templates. So you go to cosmetic correction here and you can um, make a template that is of a particular type. And what this is supporting is different binning um, configurations that you might have in your data. So some data might be binned two by two, whereas other data is binned one by one. Uh, this is especially common when you're doing kind of the monochrome imaging, not so much with a one-shot color camera, though some cameras perhaps. Uh, so you can create two different instances of this. Now, one of the things that I've always done is to use the auto, de the auto detect, which is agnostic for image size. So it actually doesn't matter if you're doing one by one or two by two images, this works regardless. But if you're using some of the other methods, like a defect list or a, um, a master dark, then that is specific to that image at that particular binning state. And so you actually have to have more than one of these. So I'm just going to make more than one. I'm not gonna actually use something here, but I'll just make one here like this. And we can call this, uh, you know, CC1. And then I can make another one and change it. Let's say I wanted to change this and, um, and turn on this for some reason. And this could just be another setting for me that I would want to set up. And so this could be CC2. So when we come back here, if your data has different binning, you will be given the option to select um, a different template. Right now, it's not giving me that option. I can select one or the other, but I can't, you know, I, because I only have one binning state here for this particular data that we've been working with. But let me show you now a data set. This will be the final thing I want to show that has two different binnings. And it has a, another configuration that is interesting that I'll take advantage of in this new version of WBPP so I can show that to you. So let's reset this to the default state. And what I need to do is navigate to the right place. I am processing some data now on a galaxy. So this is a, it's actually a reprocess for me. And I need to load the raw data. So again, I'm just gonna very quickly load all of this data. This is a multi-night data set that I did back in the beginning of 2018, the end of 2017. Um, I don't think I, yeah, I need to get the darks and the biases here. So let me add those files. You know, I just generated them, but uh, that's okay. So if we go to the fall here, I will have my biases and darks. I think that's all I need. So I've loaded everything here. And I do have two different binning sets of data. Here, let's look at the lights. You can see my clear data is binned one by one, but a binning of two for all the color data. This is very typical for doing LRGB type images. Uh, and I've got a lot to explain here. I'm, I'm not going to obviously run this, but I want to show you the configuration of everything. So one of the configurations that I can now demonstrate is that sure enough, I can apply a different template for each of the binning states whatever makes sense. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't make sense. Uh, I can specify an output directory. It really doesn't matter right now, just any place. And we set this up. So what I want to demonstrate is this idea again of pre and post processing, as well as the idea of how you deal with multi-night. Actually, this, this data has a lot of things um, that I can demonstrate. But I want to tell you something very interesting. 
uh, one of the goals I have here is that I want to use Muir Denoise on my color data. And the color data has been two by two. So what I want you to think about is the fact that if I, at some point, I'm going to want to register these images. If I were to register the color data, bin two by two, to the clear data, which has been one by one, and I tell WBPP to do it, it's going to upsample my red, blue, and green data. And that means I will not be able to use mirror denoise. So I am going to choose a different configuration here in WBPP that will allow me to use mirror denoise on the combined images of red, green, and blue. So that's uh, my goal is to set that up. Now there's other elements of this configuration, but that's one of my goals. If you look at the file names, let me show you the file names. Today, I would recommend to do it differently. Today, I would recommend that for multiple nights, just put them in folders because uh, WBPP looks at the path names and that's how you can uh, either file names or path name and you can discriminate between the different nights just by using different folders. Now, as it so happens, back in 2017, I was using a convention for file naming, but I'll take advantage of it here. One of the things I need to do is match flats taken on each of these nights with the light frames here. So if you look at my flats, uh, flats, you'll see that I have flats that are taken on different nights. That's what comes after the word date, but they're not being discriminated with here. So I'm going to add a grouping keyword, obviously, date, like this. And now I have grouped all of my flats by the value that follows the word date. And that is true now also of all the lights. So if we look in now the calibration um, uh, configuration area here, you can see that we will be matching things like a January 21st light frame is going to match a January 21st flat field frame. And this is a 1200 second exposure. It's going to be calibrated by an 1800 second exposure. So I'll talk about that in just a moment. One of the things about the flat field images is they too, they need to be calibrated and they're going to be calibrated by uh, a bias frame. Notice how these are two by two and these here are showing uh, that it's matched with the two by two bias frame. This is exactly what we want. So let me pause and tell you again, a lot of information here. We are matching darks. That's what the check uh, box means here. It means WBPP is looking to match dark frames. Well, if we want to calibrate our flat field images, there is no dark frame that matches any of these flats. I didn't take matching darks because with the sensor that I'm using, and for most sensors, though not all, but most, you can just use a bias frame if you have a short flat field exposure. So the, the logic is in WBPP, if you do not provide a dark frame, and you have this check to try to match darks, the logic is if there is no matching dark, it's going to use a bias frame if one is given. If you didn't give it a bias frame, then it's really going to complain a lot. If you give it a bias frame as we've done, it's not going to complain, but it'll give you a warning to say, you know what, there is no matching dark, but we do have a bias frame, so it's okay. We'll see that, we can, we'll see it in the diagnostics in a moment. Now, the other thing that I'm going to mention is that this is one of the cases. This is often not the case with many people's data, but with this data, it is going to work, where um, the optimization of a dark frame, this dark frame up here, or either of these dark frames, will work with this data because they're both very long. The dark current is something that is measurable, and the optimization of the dark frame will actually work to calibrate the data, but it comes with some caveats, which is that you'll get hot pixels that won't necessarily be entirely um, calibrated. But those hot pixels are not an indication that the subtraction was poor. That is just due to the fact that the hot pixel population are nonlinear in the way that they collect charge, and they are not going to calibrate out nicely when you have two different exposure times. Okay. Uh, and, and there are other things you need to know. I have an entire section. I hope that you've watched previously the section that's all about dark frame optimization. 
So I'm just going to show you. This is just one of these rare cases where you can actually do the dark frame optimization, which I'll check in one moment. But I want to deal with the other thing first, because I know that I need to separate everything out before I, uh, I do do it. Oh, maybe I can do it now. Uh, let's just go ahead. Uh, I could be wrong. Let's, let's just see if I... I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I check each of these like this. There we go. Now everything is happy. Everything will calibrate out correctly. If we look at one of these diagrams here, it'll show us that it's actually going to do the optimization here using the bias frame um, and the master dark that will be optimized to, uh, to calibrate the image. So everything is totally good. Now, as far as the post process is concerned, we need to consider what it is that we ultimately want to do. Now, uh, I'm just going to configure this in terms of uh, registration, or I can, I, you know, what the heck, I can just do the full thing. Let's do the full thing, but it is with this idea that the output that I want is I want four frames at the end of the day. Even though I have multi nights, um, I want four frames. I want a combined clear, combined red, green, and blue, but I don't want the red, green, and blue to be aligned to the clear because that will mess up my ability to do. Uh, the, um, uh, the the mirror denoise. So here is how you would set this up. We obviously need to do, with lights here, we need to do image registration. So the default is fine when we do image registration, but uh, one of the things that you'll see here is that you know, if I did auto or manual, all that's going to happen is I'm going to pick one frame or it will pick one frame, whatever it thinks is the best, and it will align all other frames to it. That is exactly what I do not want to do because that will uh, resample the colors. So I need to specify a post-processing keyword that will separate the red, green, and the blue in the way. See, we're going to get the output here, but I need, I, it's going to give me a combined red, green, and blue, but they're going to be resampled. So I need a post-processing keyword that will give me still red, green, and blue, but be aligned within each of the color bands. We can do that. All we need to do is have a post keyword, um, and we can do this one of two ways. One of the keywords is filter. If we add filter, this is the what's in the uh, fits header. So if we add filter here, now you'll see nothing really changes here. We're still grouping by filter. Uh, oh, but I need to change this, sorry, to the post, right? There we go. So now it, nothing looks like it's changed, but in a way, this is giving us an option over here under lights. If you now look under lights at the registration, now we can do auto by filter. Isn't that cool? So auto by filter, what it's going to do is it'll align all of the uh, clear images. And then it will align all of the red images, all the green images, all the blue images. But it'll choose one file from each color band and align within themselves. So the red, green, and blue data are not going to be aligned with respect to one another. I'll need to do one more alignment, if you will. I will register all of those to the... Uh, to the luminance later, but this allows me to do Muir Denoise as an interim step, which is really kind of cool, and it demonstrates a really cool feature here of uh, WBPP. So we can do image integration. After it does this alignment, it is going to combine those files just as we want, um, and then my output is going to be, as we see here under post-process, my output will be uh, one set of clear data all aligned with itself. Uh, it picked whatever reference frame it thought was best. The same is true of the blue, the green, and the red. And that is super, super powerful. So one of the things I think happens though, yeah, this is the thing, because I changed kind of the logic of the grouping here. I have to turn this back here. I will complete this. So there we have it. I demonstrated the uh, configuration here. Though, you can pause the video and see if you can think of another way you could kind of do this. So let me remove this one from here. Is there any other keywords you can think of that would also work? Uh, so I would encourage you when you get a chance to look in the 
file headers of uh, images, you can see all of the various options that you can search for. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here, and it actually will give me an opportunity to uh, show off one tiny thing. It used to be that uh, when you exited, that it would always ask you, do you really want to exit WBPP? And once the save option became a default, it would save the settings of whatever you were working on, it seemed like that didn't need to happen because it's automatically saving unless you turn off you know, to remember all of that stuff in the script. So I asked uh, Roberto, hey, can we get rid of that now? <laughs> so that's why that's gone. Um, what I wanted to show you is that if we look at, well, we can probably even look at one of these images here. If we just go to the fits header, you can see all the different kinds of things, but one of the things, and this is if you were thinking uh, of the answer, is we could also use X binning rather than filter in that way uh, we could still be grouping things, but it would be it would be a little different. So let me show you what that is. Uh, it's just another way of going about this. Cool that all of this flexibility is even possible. So if we instead for the post process here, if we made it doesn't matter the binning is the same in both X and Y, but we add one of these here like this, but I make this post like this, uh, once again, nothing is going to change here. And once again, over here, when we do this by auto, um, the registration reference image by auto, it's going to also do the job that we expect. But now, here's what's interesting. It is going to group, um, or not that it's going to group, but it's going to align, it'll pick one frame out of all of the RGBs to register all RGBs to, because that's binning two, and it'll pick one frame to register all of the binned one data, the clear color, uh, the clear channel data to align to. So instead of finding three separate, well, four total separate references, now we're only doing two reference frames, one in the clear and one for all the color data. I just think that's cool that you can do that kind of flexibility as well. So. Those really encapsulate the newest features of WBPP. I hope you enjoy using this stuff. And if you have any questions or comments, please indicate um, in the area or send me an email, and I'm happy to uh, respond. Thanks a lot, and I look forward to, of course, more updates of this uh, remarkable script.